Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's such a pleasure to be sitting here with you, Madeline. And it's a measure of trust that I don't really have completely scripted remarks, um, but also a measure of the, the beauty and mm -hmm. the wealth of work that the work does. And so um, I kind of have three questions. They're related, but so I want to think about the look, the sound, and the archive. And so maybe I want to start with the look of the film and the, the point of view from which we begin. We begin, we're not sure where we begin at first, but we begin with the woman in the chair covered, seeing the photographer who is taking not her photograph, but the photograph of the white child who she's holding. And so I really want to think with you about the look of the film, the kind of saturation, the, the, the saturated color, the deep blacks, the way that skin is rendered so beautifully. And to just ask you if you would think with me about that some, and the kind of visual um, repetition of the holes in the garment and then the breathing holes in the coffin and the sound. So could you, could you talk with me some about that? Yeah, well, um, first of all, it's, uh, overwhelming and such an honor to um, be here speaking with you, Christina, um, to be in this magnificent space uh, built for us by Rashida and Simone and Saidia and Tina and also through Susan's amazing work. And um, so I'm just so honored to be here and I want to start by saying that. Yeah. Um, there's you know, a number of people in this room that are so important to me, and so that's also a little overwhelming because I feel like I have to, or want to thank them all. You can bring their names, <laughs> go ahead, bring their names into um, the room. Yeah, I mean, I'm here with, um, with my mother and my daughter. Um, my, yes. <laughs> Her mother, the poet Erica Hunt. <laughs> my mother is a poet um, who, uh, she wrote notes on an oppositional poetics in 1990, which I've been thinking a lot about recently. Um, I'm here also with my husband, John Sesrikoff, who um, was the cinematographer on Spit on the Broom, and whom I've worked with on many films. Um, of course, we're here with Simone Lee, who um, has been one of my most important collaborators. And um, we collaborated on a film, Conspiracy, which is um, a part of her pavilion uh, here in Venice. Um, but also in terms of thinking about our conversation today, I was thinking about um, you know, being friends with Simone. There's such a wealth of, of many things to, to sort of pick from, but I was thinking about um, Simone describing early pots she would make and that she would make them with no bottoms so that they uh, sort of refused their practical purpose. Mm. And um, I'm thinking about also uh, Miss Annette, who is here, who is yeah. such um, a teacher mm -hmm. in, in dreaming as an answer to you know the many silences um, and who uh, was such an important part of, of this work that we just watched. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, I want to sort of propose to you guys today, um, imagine that you get together three of your closest friends or 20 um, of your like-minded allies mm -hmm or 50 co-conspirators, and you take whatever money you have that you can scrounge together. If it's $5, it's $5. If it's $10,000, you feel really lucky. <laughs> um, and you make something, um, and you make something that maybe is really extravagant, and really tries to be beautiful, yeah. um, something that is not uh, obviously useful, mm -hmm. <laughs> something that refuses to uh, cooperate with the demands of capitalism as mm -hmm. having an immediate 
uh, practical answer to, to the economy because black women deserve impractical, extravagant, beautiful avant-garde art too. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. So. And, um, you know, imagine that as you're making those processes with your community, you're also trying to create a process, the work aside, that uh, lives up to the political aspirations that we have for how we want to be treated and how we want to refine and reform the society and economy we exist in. Mm -hmm. Films are really, um, they're artwork and they're also businesses and economies and they're a chance to invest into each other and into black communities. And so each of my films and every film I've worked on, I've, um, that's something I keep thinking about is mm -hmm. both that's, what can we make, but also what can we do while we make it. I think that's a, a beautiful answer. And the way in which you began by wanting to call everyone's names, I think um, is, the, is, a, is, a, is an example of the kind of care that we see in the film. Um, there's a, I think, Françoise Verger in the epigraph to one of her most recent books says something along the lines of, you know, we, I think it's toward the acknowledgement, says something about the ways in which you don't write on your own right? None of, and, and you don't make a film on your own. Mm -hmm. um, and you want the film to do a certain kind of work, the work of beauty. It doesn't have to be practical work, mm -hmm. um, but to do a kind of aesthetic and caring work. And so I also wanted to see if you wanted to elaborate some then on the kind of question of care. And since you talked about your collaborations with Simone, I want to think about conspiracy, mm -hmm. which I hope if you haven't seen that you will go to the pavilion and see. But you hear it before you see it. Right? You hear it when you, when you come through um, last garment, you hear something that you're not quite sure what it is. But having spent some time with that film, I think I want to talk a little bit about the sound mm -hmm. and the way um, you use Janine Lee's um, singing mm -hmm. and her calling her daughter's name, Naima. And it's, it is such a, um, before you know what she's saying, what you're certain of is that it is tender and that it is completely subtended with love. And I, I feel like, um, say one more thing about this, so it kind of brings in the third question, which is the question of archive. Yesterday, in the conversation between Legacy and Detovia, Detovia talked about the ways that people take things, a kind of, a, a, the kind of sampling from the archive. And she said, you know, she will, she, it took her three months to do that work. Um, and the sort of hand on the film, and I feel like your tender hand is everywhere in this film. And so I wanna ask you those two things, both about the sound of conspiracy and the sound of your work. I mean, you hear, what is it, bees or flies mm -hmm. at first? Um, and then you hear a rustling. And then you hear, in conspiracy, Naima, yeah. with you know, laughter. And, and then the, the question of the archive. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll come back to the archive, but yeah. if you could talk about sound. Um, well, I think, uh, you know, each film demands a different process. Um, conspiracies, the process that Simone uh, and I built for Conspiracy was really beautiful in that we just gave it a lot of time. And the process was actually slow, which is amazing. Maybe COVID had something to do with that, but it's amazing considering how much Simone was under deadline that we we did really give it time. And um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I hear my daughter, <laughs> um, which is like, I think also uh, something I'm learning from her is um, about the time things take, give yeah. sort of another way of refusing mm -hmm. the capitalist demands that we all face is to, to sort of structure our time and sort of refuse a kind of, you know, rushed uh, 
frenetic pace yeah. where we can. Yeah, you said that something about the structure itself and the look of the, the films themselves are that kind of practice of time and, yeah. and acting refusal. Yes, I mean, uh, you know, cinematic language is really about the movement of camera through space and the duration of the frame. Those are, you know, really the syllables of language within film. Yeah. Um, for me, having a durational frame is um, radical in film mm -hmm. because uh, film, which is very much uh, a, a market-built artistic medium, demands a constant competition for attention mm -hmm. at all costs. And so to have a durational frame is a way of um, demanding a different measure of time yeah. from your audience, from their attention. Um, it's a way of honoring something that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. But also um, for me, I think that boredom or discomfort are underused registers in film that. today mm -hmm. um, because they actually, um, you know, they're the experience of sitting with something for what feels too long gives us a chance to go into the body. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, and we can think about how that registers with how we've made our way through the day. It's Beginning true. with... Um, the performance of black quantum futurism mm -hmm. and then Amy Meredith Cox centering us in our bodies and breathing time. Mm -hmm. And then the, the look of the camera, the, cam the way the camera's held on faces, on feet, um, is really uh, gorgeous. Yeah. Um, oh, I was gonna say, it, you know, as you were talking, I was thinking about um, Julie Dash, Daughters of the Dust, mm -hmm. and that moment in the screenplay book when Tony Cade Bambara says she's trying to heal our imperialized eyes. Mm -hmm. And so I think about the, the connection between your practice and that let's use those underdeveloped registers of mm -hmm. discomfort. Let's sit with it, boredom, uh, not understanding, mm -hmm. and see what that actually feels like in our bodies. Yeah. But I, I think the counter to that is also spectacle, as Absolutely. you're saying, the imperial. And, um, you know, I'm interested in the relationship between, you know, the mundane or the, the, the boring moment, the, the voiceover that requires a lot of attention, yeah. and then the pleasure that cinema also can provide and the references of, you know, popular culture that cinema makes available to us to use. Mm -hmm. um, and moving in between those registers, what that does to the body and what that opens up for us. That's lovely. Um, because I really think that, you know, the reason to work in ways that are experimental is to try to open something up for ourselves and for other people. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, to not, uh, to ask more of us than to just be in the screen, but to say there's valuable things happening inside of you too, and I want you to pay attention to them, so. That's great. So instead of breaking those grammars, what might it break open? And then making a different set of grammars, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, <laughs> I, I, had, I had a thought, um, but maybe it's, well, let's come back to the question of archive because it was mm -hmm. something that you said in the process of that answer about the kinds of references, sort of mm -hmm. the ways in which popular cinema, say, plays on certain kind of references so that you, could con you can see the reference to another film. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to ask you, the, the, what are your references? Mm -hmm. And how do you enter the archive? It's clearly uh, with care, um, you know, at the end, you know, um, Miss O'Grady appears at the end mm -hmm. of Conspiracy. Um, Miss Annette is in Spit on the Broom. Um, and so, so not just a question of archive, but a question of generations, a question of influences, a question of continuities. So could mm -hmm. you, can you speak some more to that? Yes, well, I think for me in the final form of the work, the archive is embedded, not purely translated. Um, I think that part of that is for me a resistance to a demand within the film medium 
that we be translators and advocates because of the immediacy of film, um, which is something that's impossible, right? It's like, um, what will actually create change is us deciding to make structural change. Mm -hmm. It's an unfair burden to put on art. Yes. But my process is deeply rigorous in the archive and deeply rigorous in terms of my interest in reinvesting in the people I work with. Mm -hmm. um, and so in the case of the tents, um, you know, I had first visited the tents with Simone and also with the writer Caitlin Greenidge. Mm -hmm. And then I kept going back on my own and doing oral histories um, with many of the women about their experiences in the tents. Mm -hmm. And that was an archive that became a product that, you know, isn't visible in the work. Mm -hmm. um, the film itself. For me, the tents were a teacher in cinematic form mm -hmm. because I realized that some of what the power was of being with them was the secrecy and to simply sort of reveal um, you know, their secrets was to take away its power. Mm -hmm. um, and so then the film itself became a kind of trickster form mm -hmm. of showing and also protecting. Um, and similarly with conspiracy, I think uh, we were interested in the embedded archive in some ways as well, mm -hmm. um, in thinking about lineages of um, both Simone's work, but also art history, um, of lineages of um, a kind of... Uh, ooh, that's our tambourine, yeah, but we can finish a, this thought. <laughs> uh, what I will say is that, you know, I think I think um, it was important, it was in this moment that was so historic to also say um, that there have been many brave, um, unuseful uh, women artists before us yeah. and who we make work in conversation with and Lorraine O'Grady is one of those artists mm -hmm. and Jean Lee is one of those mm -hmm. artists. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just, I, I was saying to someone today, I'm so grateful that we live in a time where we get to celebrate um, all of these many generations of artists mm -hmm. um, and that we're finally in a time where also um, we can demand the platforms that have always been deserved. Yeah. Um, and I think, if, if, you know, and also to celebrate, but also to work with, yes, right? Um, and this is such a, a wonderful bringing together. Um, it's a pleasure. Yes, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you.